Isn't it very frustrating when you have to work from a very bad reference photo? Today we are going to have a very relaxed conversation about how to deal with a really bad reference photo while I'm working on my most recent commission. As commissioned artists, we will all face this problem at some point. Many clients have lost their pets and have no way to take new photos, so all they have left are some old photos, some even being unusable. This is by far one of the biggest problems of a pet portrait or people portrait artist. When I first started creating commissions, I had no idea what a reference photo should look like or what I was looking for in it. All I wanted was to be seen and share my art with as many people as possible, honestly also in a way a bit desperate, because I had that inner fire that wanted everything to go well and to be a success in the end accepting all kind of requests. Now looking back at all those things, I wonder, was it worth the stress and difficulty to work with such a bad reference photo? The answer is yes. The advantage of this situation is that I learned to pay more attention to colors, shapes and tones than to details, the last one being almost impossible to visualize Eventually, I ended up looking for other pictures of that breed on the internet to be able to create some decent details. That will be the only solution in this case. We can't imagine what the fur pattern looks like or add some new colors from our imagination because the result will be a different dog which is not the purpose of a commission. When I discuss pictures with the client, I always ask them for as many pictures as possible. There have been cases where they only have one picture that is unusable that I agreed to work with but the stress and weight of working with such a picture has taken all the joy and pleasure of drawing so you have to ask yourself these questions before accepting a picture. Can I really create a quality drawing? Can I see the details clearly enough? Won't it be a pain to finish this drawing? I know at first we all don't know what to do and how to react and we want to accept as many drawings as possible because we are excited that someone wants us to draw their pet but we also have to learn when to say no which is the hardest part of being a commissioned artist. How do you say no to someone who is grieving the loss of their pet if you really tried your best to make a beautiful drawing but it really can be done? You have to stop in the end and say I'm sorry but I couldn't achieve the desired result. The question is, how do you say that without sounding offensive and disrespectful? Even if you don't intend to offend, which I'm sure none of us do, some customers may be offended. We are all different and react differently in certain situations. Some clients will understand but others will feel that you are not artistic enough to finish the drawing thinking that any reference picture can be used as the animal is visible in it. Now it's story time about one similar situation in my pet drawing career so far. When I started posting on Facebook groups for promotion, I received a private message from a lady who wanted me to draw her husky. After agreeing on the size and price of the drawing, it was time to decide on a picture. Unfortunately. The animal had been deceased for a few years and the lady only had pictures that were not digital but those of the old days on paper. Since I had no choice, I suggested to the client to try to scan them and send them to me. Said and done. Everything went well until I opened the pictures I have received on my email. The quality was so low that I couldn't even see the colors well, the details were already long gone, besides they were all taken from a long distance, the animal being far away in the pictures. In that second I realized I didn't have a magic wand to perform a miracle spell. Now let's get to the most delicate part of this story. How did I say no without offending and feeling guilty? What you shouldn't do under any circumstances is to phrase the message like this. The picture is so bad that I can't use it under any circumstances don't you have any more? This will make you look arrogant and the customer will definitely feel offended. On the other hand, a non-offensive and polite wording would be something like this. 
Thank you very much for the pictures, but I don't think I could create a drawing commemorating your pet using these pictures. I want to be able to create the quality drawing that you are proud of when you frame it and put it on the wall because the reference pictures don't give me a chance to see everything clearly and integrate the character of your pet into the drawing. Isn't this one much more polite and compassionate than the previous one? All you have to do is to show the customer that you want to give them something of quality that they can be proud of, but you also have to be honest that it's not possible to achieve. That way you get rid of the stress of creating something perfect, using something imperfect and eventually having to deal with an unhappy customer who doesn't want to pay you. My client reacted very well to this message and understood that I really want to help her but I can't achieve the result she wants. In our careers, we will always come across such situations. In the best case, the client finds a much better picture and we are both happy in the end but there will be situations where we have to say no. Nowadays, most people have a smartphone that they use to make very good quality photos that are ideal for a drawing, which makes our job easier. It's all about giving the client a beautiful experience from the first conversation to the final result, including the conversation about the desired picture. Of course, all of this is shared from my personal experience and I'm not saying we all need to do it this way, but I've shared how you can also say no in a polite way. Not all of us are the same, for me a picture can be of bad quality, but you can use it without any problem. There may be cases where the picture is okay to use for sketching and seeing the colors, but not for details like eyes and nose. The only solution is to look for pictures of the breed in similar angles and colors for reference, but keep in mind that in the end, the client has to recognize his animal in the portrait. If you focus too much on other pictures, you can, without realizing it, change the animal completely. That's why I avoid the situations as much as possible. I hope you really enjoyed this relaxing conversation and that I didn't ramble too much and that you learned something from my experience in dealing with the bad reference photo. I didn't film the whole process of creating Daisy this commission I'm working on while talking, but here you can see what the end result looks like. Now we came to an end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed it and you've learned a lot from it. I am posting one time a week and normally graphite, colored pencil or pastel related videos. So if you don't want to miss any of those, please hit that subscribe button and the bell button as well to be notified every time a video goes live. And I really hope I'm going to see you in the next one as well. Have a nice day. Bye, guy.